Hey friends, I was born and raised in Buenos Aires in Argentina, but have lived in Denmark and specifically in Copenhagen for the last 11 years. There's lots to love about both places, and in this video I'll guide you through a little competition between the two countries. I have picked eight key factors that make a great place to live and will put both Denmark and Argentina face to face on each of these eight key factors. If you're new here, my name is Mario and on this channel I have experts in Denmark and some things as well at this stage with their finances, investing and living the best life possible here in Scandinavia. The number one reason I left Argentina is because of the location. I absolutely love traveling, I have been to over 135 different countries and it's just very hard, expensive and time consuming and sometimes I would say even impossible to travel this much if you are living in Argentina. Because turns out Argentina it's just very far from almost everything. It's like 14 hours to go to London, it's 10 hours to go to New York, and it's like 18 hours to go to Dubai, and all that like non-stop. So in a lot of places, for example, if you want to go to East Asia, it's impossible to go with a direct flight. The only close places are Brazil and Chile, and that's like three hours away as well. Denmark, on the other hand, is in Europe, and it turns out Europe is very well located. You have the best time zones, there are direct flights to pretty much anywhere in the world, except like Australia and New Zealand. This is just a boon if you want to travel. I did weekend trips for like dozens of places. I visited all more all around Europe from Copenhagen as a place. Even like did some like weekend trips, believe it or not, to places like North Africa, even like South Korea, just because it was possible. So this is a solid point to Denmark. Two is weather. And while Denmark's location is great to travel, it's quite up north and it can get pretty cold up here. So in Denmark, winters are dark, long and very cold. And while it can be fun to be playing in the snow and to be cozy at home with the candles and so on, and I made a whole video about that explained here, it's just not hard to find a better deal. And it also just rains a lot. And if you're really unlucky, it can rain even one of the full summer months. I remember that July almost raining the whole July a few years ago, so that can happen. On the other hand, in Argentina, the weather is just fantastic. It's almost never too cold. It's almost never too warm. Yeah, you might have the odd, cold, very cold week, the old, very warm week. But by and large, it's around 20 to 25 degrees almost a whole year and a lot of sunshine as well, speaking for Buenos Aires at least. So, and Argentina, of course, is a big place, but this is a solid point to Argentina. So that takes us to Denmark one, Argentina one. Free is natural beauty. And Argentina is a big place. So it's roughly the size of India, though with 30 times less people. And it's still in Argentina, you will have a spectacular sites like the Iwasu Falls, the Patagonian glaciers, you have like alpine landscapes, like animals all over, like penguin colonies and so on. It's genuinely a beautiful place. And even I would say, there's a lot of beauty in Buenos Aires itself. It's just a really, really nice city. Denmark, on the other hand, is a small, simple place. After all, you could fit like 65 times Denmark's in Argentina. So, of course, not counting Greenland, which is officially part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Denmark is a nice place to go around, but if in Europe, you just find a lot more places with more natural beauty and more nice things to see. I would say also this is an easy point for Argentina. So Denmark 1, Argentina 2. 4 is government. And I don't want to be political on this channel, but let me just give a dick to the Argentina government. I think that Argentinian government has been absolutely terrible for most of the last, what, like 60, 70 years. It's a shame that a beautiful country like this is full of good and hardworking people. It's just in effect run by a bunch of politicians who are like good for nothing but stealing. So it's basically like they are working over time to destroy the country and enrich themselves. It's absolutely a disaster. Just to give a concrete example, Argentina was named by Bloomberg as the country that worst handled the COVID pandemic, including one of the world's longest lockdowns and one of the world's highest death rates in the world. So absolute disaster. I think when it comes to Argentina, the big issue is that we don't really have a long-term compass or a direction setting of where we want to go as a country. There are literally no long-term plans. And since I can remember, we don't even have short-term fixes. So everything from taxes to education to everything is handled ad hoc. It's an absolute craziness. Denmark on the contrary, it's a stable country with respect the government, whoever is in power, everything really works. And while the government might have an agenda or not, I mean, there might be things here and there, discussion ports will also always be minor and there's a kind of a blueprint of how we're supposed to run this country and how we're supposed to move forward. This is a solid point for Denmark and that takes us to 2-2. Two, two. Five is safety. And Argentina was a safe place comparable to most Southern European countries, you could say. Maybe not as safe as Japan, but it was still pretty safe when I was growing up. But that now has not been the case for quite a while. And I would say also, again, one of the consequences of having such an incompetent government for now, like decades and decades and decades. And Denmark, on the other hand, it is a very safe place. And guys, when I meet about safety is that in Denmark and in other places in Northern Europe as well, your life, your family's life is safe. There is, of course, going to be break-ins in Denmark 
mark. I mean, good luck leaving your bike without a lock. I mean, it's gonna be immediately taken away, right? But you will never be worried about someone injuring your children or injuring yourself just to rob you of your phone. And that can actually happen in places like South America. It's pretty nasty. I think this is so important and I really hope it never changes. If there's one thing I value a lot about living in Scandinavia is that, again, I just don't have a fear for my life or my family's life. I know like when my wife goes out with my son and so on, they were gonna be playing on Sunday, they're gonna be coming back without having to run into someone going to, to kill them for whatever they have on, them, on themselves. So of course, this is super important. I would say even more than the health and all the other things that you have here. So with tears in my eyes, I would like to say that here, this is a solid point to Denmark and that takes us to Denmark three, Argentina two. Six is friendliness and fun. And I have been bashing a lot about Argentina now, but Argentina is a really fun place to be. It's kind of hard to explain if you have never lived there, but people are just funny. So in the day-to-day, -day, people are funny, making you laugh. And like, even in our kind of misery as a country, right? It's just a very fun place to be. And it, maybe it's something that we do spend a lot of time talking with each other. We spend a lot of time hanging out. We spend a lot of time eating out. I mean, we're eating a lot, a lot, a lot more than I would see people eating out in Denmark. And we're just meeting friends a lot more than I would see in other places as well. I don't know, but I think like the social side of Argentina is just no doubts better than Denmark. It's just easier to laugh, easier to make friends, easier to hang out, to be spontaneous. Denmark is okay. Let it be known that I had a time of my life, for example, especially my first couple of years here in Denmark studying university, like real, real fun, like the time of my life. But once you settle down, you become more serious in life and get kids and become a, like a working in a company and so on, life can become a bit more boring in the day to day in Denmark. Of course, it's more about what you make out of it, but there's no doubt that with the same amount of effort put into your social life, you can have a lot more fun in South America and especially in Argentina than you will do here. Even for expats, like if you want to meet up, of course, some people people might suggest you here in Denmark that you should like be letting them know like three, four weeks in advance. Even I just remember once I got invited to a birthday party, like a really to a birthday party like five months in advance by an expat. It's not even a native day, right? So, so this takes us to free, free. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you get access to many of my future videos. But now with that, let's get back into the game. Seven, the work culture. My single most favorite thing about Denmark is the work culture. It's just fantastic in the sense that it's non-hierarchical, it's supportive of new parents, and people really trust you. So if you do your job and you deliver, and if you're a good person in what you're doing, and you like basically a good employee if you're working in a company, right? You're literally good to go. You can leave at 3 p.m. and go home and do whatever you need to do, and nobody will say anything. So long again, you keep delivering. Keep in mind, when I moved to Denmark, I came as a money-making digital nomad. I didn't really need to get a job. I was it was not ever in my plans to work in a corporation. I, I was just fine working online. But I just switched to the corporate life. Plus, I mean, of course, I have this sidekick, but like I switched to having a corporate life as my main setup because it's just so nice here. And in Argentina, like in most of the worlds, I don't think working in a big corporation is just a nice experience. I wouldn't, for example, want to work in a company in Argentina. That's not because people are not skilled and so on. I think there's a lot of very skilled and very smart and very highly educated people, even sometimes more than here. But it's a lot of more about big egos, long work hours, low pay, and a lot of, let's say, sucking it up to the bosses. So this is a solid point to Denmark, which takes us to four, three, and match point to Denmark. Eight, last but not least, food. So Denmark is home to the two best restaurants in the world. So it surely has to win this, right? Well, no. So it turns out that while Noma is great, and I was there personally, I found it very interesting. I just don't think Danish food is just too nice. Call me a simple man. I just like my grilled steak with salad. And that's in Argentina almost impossible to be. Argentina might not have any Nomas, but there's just a ton of good places with excellent food all across the cities, all across the, anywhere you would go walk and you would find a nice place to eat with really good food. I would even say now, it's even becoming easier for vegetarians to live there, believe it or not. So it's just an excellent place to eat. So that, ladies and gentlemen, takes us to a 4-4, so we have a tie. But we need to choose a winner, right? So let's take one more point, and to make it fair and square, let's take taxes. So here in Denmark, you pay taxes of, let's say, roughly half of your salary, 25% sales tax, and up to 45% on your investments, among many other taxes. So you do get a lot of benefits out of this, but let's not kid ourselves, the numbers of taxations or taxes and so on that you get in Denmark is absolutely crazy. How can a country be worse in taxes than Denmark? Denmark. Because, my friends, Argentina is worse than Denmark in taxes. Argentina is run, as I said, by a rent-seeking government that is basically a disaster. But one of the things that you need to know about Argentina as well is that there's an insane amount level of taxation as well. So that most work, and mostly to working people, to exports. And on top of that, we have the highest corporate taxes in the whole world, I think. So needless to say, 
also as well like new taxes are invented almost every year when the government realizes that they need some more money somehow they find like okay we should be, be taxing crypto okay let's tax crypto as well so that's basically the way it's done for the last 30 years or more so there's always new taxes and again all done in an ad hoc way so it's absolutely a disaster so to finish up it's gonna be a 5-4 to Denmark so congratulations to Denmark but I have to say it has been a very tough decision to decide which one of the two countries would be better if you have enjoyed this video you also enjoyed this video over here where I go through my favorite things about living in Denmark with that thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again next week